Hi again, everyone. So we're making great progress on day four of WFS Live. Um, we've got five more panels to come. Um, as I mentioned before, I mean, remember, this is a, a virtual conference. It's not just the content you're seeing, which is brilliant. And we've got you know, some incredible insights that uh, our speakers have, have given us and some great conversations uh, driven by our moderators. But do also check out the expo area. There are some fantastic exhibitors there who'd really love you to just spend some time uh, engaging with them. So please do so. Uh, just check out this uh, World Football Summit platform. And you'll be able to find them. Um, now, we've talked about being creative for the last couple of sessions. Let's focus on being collaborative and in a collaboration, a, a real partnership between uh, two entities. Um, one of them you should absolutely know, arguably one of the most famous football clubs in the world uh, in Real Madrid. And the other is a company called Horizon. Now, if you're not aware of their work, they're a company who leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning to uh, track, value, monetize and sell digital inventory across sports and entertainment. And of course, we've seen this shift from, from linear towards digital non-live uh, consumption. That's really been accelerating. So digital assets really do represent one of the most relevant uh, and um, considerable opportunities for, for clubs, for leagues, for federations, even for players, in fact. Um, if you want to really diversify those revenue streams, it's an area you should be looking into. And they also, I suppose, especially given what we've gone through in the last year, mitigate that, that dependency on live events. And as far as Horizon are concerned, well, they've got plenty of clients, governing bodies in, in volleyball, in hockey, also uh, the Aussie Open tennis, numerous elite level football clubs, but really the most eye-catching partnership of all is that with uh, Real Madrid. So let's find out why it's been such a success. This partnership is, uh, this session rather, is in partnership with Horizon. And here are your speakers. Uh, the CEO of uh, Olosip and former footballer Esteban Granero, uh, the CEO of Horizon, Pedro Mestriner, and uh, Chief Transformation Officer at Real Madrid, Mike Sutherland. And to moderate this session, uh, Senior Manager in PwC's European Sports Business advisory clive reeves clive great to have you with us it'd be really interesting to learn about horizon in this the next 40 minutes or so over to you thanks a lot david and uh, yeah good afternoon everyone uh, welcome to this session um so today we're going to be talking about setting new standards in, in ai and, and digital, digital innovation um so i'm going to try and moderate the session we've got three great great speakers uh, lots of interesting topics to you know, to get through Maybe before we kick off, uh, if I give each of you one minute, just give us a quick, quick background into you know, the, the type of things you're doing on a day to day basis. So Esteban, if I maybe kick off with yourself. Can you go again for a question? Sorry. Okay. Um, a quick, quick introduction to, to your work uh, in, in this space. Uh, what, what are you working on right now? Thank you. We are working on uh, transporting analysis of players into the future, not giving only past statistics of players, but answering what clubs are questioning themselves when they are trying to sign a player, that is, what will be the performance of this player. And this is mainly what we are focusing on right now. Okay, perfect. And, and Pedro, uh, maybe a quick introduction on your side? Yeah, we are focused very strongly on monetization. I think uh, David started uh, the introduction on that, we are strongly focused on monetization of digital assets. Okay, and, and Michael on your side? Well, obviously, Real Madrid, uh, one of the most recognized football clubs, and in particular with transformation, it's something that we see as a continuous journey. So I'm really looking at ways uh, that we can continue um, to provide leadership in the industry over the you know, long-term view. So as, as we look at all different aspects of the business, digital transformation, business transformation, and otherwise. Okay, great. Well, uh, well welcome everyone. And uh, maybe if I just try and set the scene for, for what we're going to talk about today. So we, over the last few years, we've seen uh, you know, a huge increase in you know, the adoption of new technologies across all areas of, of the sports business landscape, you know, on-field and off-field. I think we've seen through the, the, the current pandemic, you know, the industry has been really rocked by the COVID situation and, and digital has been that place where people have gone to for, yeah, for engaging with their audiences, uh, creating content. Um, and we've really seen, I think, an acceleration in the, the digital innovation space in the last few months in particular, but certainly building on the trends that were probably there in the background anyway. I think just to, to highlight a, a point in our recent sports survey, we had 78% of our respondents uh, globally said they will increase their funding and their efforts to accelerate digital transformation. 
So I think it just highlights the importance of the of the of the topic and the theme of today's discussion. Um, and I think in, in what we want to cover in the next 35 minutes is around what is the future of the industry? What are the new standards that we, we think are going to be set both on the field and off the field? And maybe just touch on a little bit around what stage of digital transformation do we see football is at and, and different clubs and, and different levels of their maturity. So that's, uh, that's what we'd like to try and cover in the next, uh, next few minutes. Uh, but maybe just to kick off, if I go around the, around the panel and say, what do you think has developed most in the last 12 months? And, and how do you see AI and digital innovation really changing the way clubs, clubs think about you know, and do business? So maybe if I kick off Pedro with yourself, like, how do you see things have developed and how do you think, see things moving forward in, in the future? Good. Thanks for that, Clive. Uh, for us, the first thing we, we saw, the, the big difference you know, and the biggest transformation was the mindset. You know? I think the trend, as you, you were mentioning, is already happening in the last year or so, that the, the industry itself was doing a good job uh, on you know, growing audience, creating some data sets. But now in the last, especially in the last six months, what happened is the mindset, which is the core for, for innovation. No? When the industry, of course, is doing, let's say, especially on monetization, no? on, on sponsorship and partnerships, are pretty much working the same in the last uh, 20, 30 years, no? with a few improvements. No? Uh, so, of course, that accumulation of knowledge generated good answers for the problems. No? So, but the same problem, the problems we already knew. What happened now in the last uh, you know, six months, literally, is that we need to answer different problems. And for that, uh, we apply you know, in our as horizon as a company, basically, but also you know, on probably with uh, Olosip as well, with Esteban and Real Madrid, we apply the creativity to ask new questions so we can also figure out, you know, basically having new, new answers for that. You know? And that new discoveries, it's the real innovation. You know? So that mindset, plus the implementation of that discovery, it's, it's what is really happening right now, faster than even we expected. Great, and, um, and Michael, from your side, uh, what have you seen really the big developments in, in the recent you know, months and uh, how do you see the digital innovation really changing the way football clubs uh, do business? If they're thinking more from an industry perspective at this, this stage. Well, I mean, in terms of, you know, digital itself, digital is a bit of a loaded term. I mean, it means many different things to, to different people. Uh, I mean, we can be talking about digital content, digital business models, digitalization of processes and systems. And I think just to echo Pedro, you know, the one thing that is, is clear is that having a digital mindset throughout every aspect of the business is critical. Um, you know, and, you know, these past 12 months, with this ongoing pandemic, if nothing else, it's put the spotlight on this necessity for this way of thinking. And so, I mean, if we're talking about digital media, for example, these past 12 months have put a lot more pressure on extracting the most value from our digital content and channels compared to traditional media assets. So, you know, traditional media is not going away. Uh, fans are gonna be coming back to the stadiums, matches are gonna return to normal. But the lessons that we've learned during this period are going to stay with us and it's going to open up new opportunities moving forward. So, you know, digital media has more flexibility in some ways. So it's not just about the number of eyeballs. It's about engagement and what engagement's really about is understanding better who your audience is. So being able to intelligently segment your audience based on interest, being able to serve them content that they really want to see. And, you know, that level of personalization is not possible with traditional media channels. And so it, it opens up new, new possibilities for clubs and sponsors, as Pedro kind of mentioned. And, and, you know, we've seen over the last 12 months, I believe, an increase in the sort of the creativity around content during this pandemic. And I think we're likely to see that continue over the next 12 months and beyond as you know clubs apply the learnings that we've had over these last 12 months and you know new tools uh, are put in place to it to it to allow clubs to really exploit the, the the greater capabilities and the flexibility that we have with digital media and digital channels yeah no, 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 great esteban on, on your side so what, what are you seeing from the digital innovation perspective that's affecting the on-field side of things um yeah how, how do you see that progressing in, in recent years and, and going forward Thank you. Well, um, 
what I think it has changed the most in the last uh, months or year has been the access to data. And this is something also artificial intelligence has something to say with computer vision and also to uh, the ability that has uh, artificial intelligence to create data and to clean data. So now everybody in the football industry has access to data and this is this big data fever where we are all. Uh, but uh, I think in the next uh, couple of years, uh, everybody will focus on how to treat this data in order to create knowledge, in order to make these predictions that will make you be able to reduce uncertainty in order to take better decisions everywhere in a football club. I'm sure I'm sure Real Madrid is uh, standard from for for this kind of technologies, and of course Horizon is um, leader company in his sector because of this ability to treat data. And for us, it's the same. In order to 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 give in, insights on information about player performance, we we know that the most important thing is not only having the data, but what we do with the data before giving to the client. Interesting. So, so we've just heard there already, they, there's a shift in the mindset of, of, of the practitioners and, and the people within sports organizations. We talked about creativity and, and now we're in a data world now and, and in the future, that's probably going to become even more, more important. But what about new technologies? What do you see coming in, say, the next, you know, next few years, one to three years? What new technologies do you think may come in place that may help redefine the, the sports business area? Are there any types of technologies you think are going to come in and uh, continue to shift the way people work? Maybe, um, Mike, if I come to you first from your, your background in, in Silicon Valley, what, what are you seeing that may, may come in and impact our, our sports uh, world? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I think there's, there's, I wouldn't say just necessarily technologies. I think it's important to to really not necessarily look at technology as being the key driver, but also looking at behaviors as a key driver in the industry. So, you know, looking first at how fans want to consume content, how they want to shop, uh, the types of products they want to buy, looking at how that, that behavior is shifting is kind of a leading indicator to the types of technologies that are coming along as well. Um, but it, it's, it, it, can, it can happen in both ways. So, I mean, if, we had to, if I had to sort of call out a few of the things that I think are worth paying attention to, um, I mean, you know, some of these sound like buzzwords, but part of the reason that they're buzzwords is because they, they will ultimately end up having a big impact. So things like 5G, but, you know, when we say about 5G, why, why is 5G going to have an impact? Because, you know, 5G is going to bring about an entire new world of, of bandwidth, which is going to bring with it, you know, a greater capability to pro provide richer content and, you know, more and more data coming to your personal devices. And so consumer expectations are going to then change for what they expect. So, I mean, the, the, the rollout of 5G in a longer term period, a longer term sort of mindset is going to, to change how fans expect us to interact with them. And we're going to need to think about the types of, of services and content that we can deliver having, you know, 10x the bandwidth, this ultra low latency. And uh, that is going to affect the experience in the stadium. It's going to affect the way that we uh, interact with fans uh, on their on their mobile handsets or or other mobile devices that will emerge as a result of this. So I think that's a key area to to look out for. Um, obviously, you know one of the topics today that we're talking about AI, we're just at the infancy of it. Um, you know today AI is has has become a term that sort of covers everything from basic automation all the way through to deep neural nets. Uh, probably there's nothing that really truly resembles artificial intelligence but it's here and it's real and it's not a buzzword and it's having an impact in business every day and that's only going to continue uh as as the technologies become more advanced as we get bigger and bigger data sets that we can work with and that's really is going to have a big impact on the day-to-day -day running of business we see it already across almost every aspect of the business um it, it really impacts everything from on the pitch performance match time training to uh, to the way that we can provide personalization, hyper personalization through retail, e-commerce, et cetera. I mean, the, the list is really pretty endless where, you know, machine learning technologies are gonna impact the business or are already impacting the business. 
And uh, I don't want to take up all the time, but I mean, I could kind of go on and on. There's, there's, there's a number of big ones that are going to have an impact. I think, you know, things like real time data, uh, you know, particularly with 5G, the use of real time for sports analytics, but also for uh, the type of uh, experience that we can offer to fan, being able to process big amounts of data in real time and then apply those machine learning and AI algorithms is going to radically change the way that we can understand uh, both our businesses, but also things like sports performance. And so I don't know, I'm going to stop there because I don't want to take up all the time, but you, you've got me on a topic that I'm, I'm passionate about. So I'll, I'll stop before I, before I run off with all the time. No, that, that's great. And Pedro, anything from your side you, you would add in terms of new technologies? And maybe if I extend the question a bit further and say, what are some of the, the potential obstacles or barriers for adoption of uh, new technologies uh, within, within the sports mm -hmm. industry? I mean, our focus is, of course, is uh, within AI is purely machine learning. So I don't want to get into details, but just to clarify that machine learning is subset of AI, as Mike was saying, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with that. But in our case, is purely focused on reading a large amount of data and basically teaching uh, the machine for that, you know, for a specific output, you know. Uh, in the case, we're going to continue to see that when literally when I studied AI back in the universe, like 20 something years ago, AI was kind of, uh, you know, we need to work, have the machine work like the human brain, you know, which was kind of not cool. We think that would happen, but now in the last five years, what happened is AI really are focused on some categories. One is like Michael said, it's reading, especially with 5G, for example, whole chunks of data and provide real time you know so in our case at horizon precisely we are the first solution real time solution that can leverage you know um and help sports organization to better track and value commercial inventory you know so this is with the technology uh provide the real time data which was totally opposite that was happening you know a few years back in time that you need two or three months to have a result of uh, whatever campaign you're doing you know these allow this kind of technologies I think Mike said we are just in the beginning, you know? so for us we're just learning as well through the process uh, continuously. You know? Great, thank you. And Esteban, from from your perspective, as you see you know, anything to add on the new technologies and and any any points around barriers to, that need to be overcome, particularly on the on the football side of the business uh, where you, where you operate mostly. Yes, the, for, for me, the, the key factors um, uh, having impact right now in the, in the new technologies implantation in, in, in football is, uh, of course, uh, nowadays the pandemic. And this is something we can talk about uh, how uncertainty is so important in order to make decisions. Uh, artificial intelligence, as Mike said, uh, has this ability to reduce uncertainty and in these moments of huge uncertainty of course is a technology that uh, must be uh, very important and the other factor that will define uh, how technologies are implanted into into sports into football is how these technologies are able to um, add competitivity to the clubs and this is the the final point we make technology in order to make better better clubs better results economic result, performance result, and this natural selection of the clubs that will increase his victories and increase his revenue uh, is what will uh, make the technology stay and uh, no technology to go away from, from football. That's great. So let's, let's move on. So one of the, the parts of the title we have for the session is about setting new standards. So I was really keen to you know, to ask you the different questions here around the types of new standards we think we're going to we're going to set, and maybe if I just reference um, two of the biggest opportunities that were, were reported in our sports survey was around enhancing the digital media experience for fans, and then the monetization of digital assets. Um, so clearly, sports leaders are thinking around digital and the monetization of digital in particular. Um, so I was keen to, maybe if I start with you, you, Michael, around Real Madrid. So how are you trying to set new standards within the digital uh, innovation transformation area? Um, 
And how are the sort of you trying to identify and implement the right technologies that help you, you know, drive your business forward? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's in terms of let's just tackle the uh, the part about uh, how to choose the right technologies. So, I mean, the first thing is that the, well, the simple way of answering that is really to say that we we don't choose the technology. We we look for the need and we try and address the need. So whether that's a customer need or a or a um, or or a business need need the the most critical piece is really to understand deeply what the need is and in some cases technology can be part of the solution or it can be uh, the entire solution but the key for us is to to really start with identifying what that that business need is um, and so you know from my my perspective you know coming from sort of a technology and innovation background in, in sort of you know going through sort of silicon valley developing new products uh you know i tend to look at it through through that sort of product lens about balancing you know the business customer and technology um needs as sort of three equal equal pillars and so i would tend to look at kind of the the macro technology trends that are happening in the broader market as a, as a point to start and then kind of look at where those are intersecting with you know the ability to, to create new customer value new business models new value delivery models um but you know when when we want to when we want to co-develop a solution i mean one of the things that i think you know given that we're we're here with um Horizon is is just sort of looking at like what that what that model is for uh innovation and i mean i think that you know in this case you know, one of the things we're always looking at is, you know, with the, the technology evolving at such a rapid pace, uh, we need to find ways to innovate faster. And so in this case, what we what we looked at was, you know, a model where we actually incubated this the solution with Horizon inside the business and kind of co-innovated with, with them. And so as a result, you know, Horizon was able to bring a, a solution to market faster. And it's one that provides real business value because it was achieved you know, in this co-collaboration environment with rapid iteration and, you know, direct feedback from our internal business stakeholders. And so I think, you know, looking at these new or these mold, models of co, co-innovation um, and open innovation and other innovation models are, are, are really critical for us to um, to help, you know, not just develop our, our business and, and where we want to go with our business, but also it's, you know, in this sense, it's really a way of helping to shift the, the industry forward as well. Um, because we get a solution that works for us, and Horizon's uh, able to deliver a solution to market that that is that already has that product market fit. And so we're I'm really interested in in looking at more of these sorts of co-innovation models and open innovation models um, for helping to really speed up that that development of new technology and find solutions that bring real value. Yeah, no, definitely seeing more of those yeah, co-creative models across sport. I think that's a it's a great point. Maybe Pedro, if I come come to you then and uh, think about how football clubs in particular can unlock more value from their digital assets, and um, yeah, maybe talk us through how how you see this sort of new area emerging, if you like, and and how you're trying to set new standards to really drive mm-hmm. the, the industry forward from that monetization of a digital asset. I think uh, well, as, as as Mike was saying, you know, our approach is uh, more focus on a different questions, you know? So for that, the way we are driving this monetization is making a different, totally different question for the point we're doing, how we were pricing our digital inventory in the last years, you know? How can we be pricing out to fit to the guys, to the companies basically who are paying that, you know? So that, uh, that point is the one we are addressing, you know? The one is that we are, instead of doing a theoretical media exposure, for example, we are going to a more traditional marketing campaign. So we are focused on what on the other side, you know, let's say the brands are used to, you know. And uh, just as um, I think we we're talking about this before we started, you know, the industry right now in general, you know, so advertising, for example, uh, digital advertising probably is around globally 60%, 65% of the total advertising. It's already shifted to digital, you know. Sponsorship in general is even less than 10%. So this gap, is the one we're trying to fill now. And that's why when Mike said, when we came with the solution to Real Madrid, basically, look, this is what we have. Their position, their ability to push us as well because of their standards, their requirements, the team, 
but also the complexity of the you know the way uh, the organization is is big enough to push us to deliver the best product you know so the way to address this problem is uh, as we're mentioning it not only technology not only having the right standard to that is to answer a different question and and the question is coming from the sponsor is how can i price my uh, you know your digital assets properly you know and not only the traditional way they were doing the last 20 30 years that's our approach okay great and and esteban i'll, I'll come to you on the on the the sort of player performance side so in terms of setting new standards in this part of the, the industry how are you using the AI to provide new insights uh, into player performance and, and how do you see that sort of driving up the standards uh, in that part of the, the sector? Yes, as, as Pedro said, it's, it's, it's key to, to find what is the club demanding and uh, drive the technology into this uh, direction. In terms of performance, what uh, performance of player for example, scouting services, what clubs are looking for is reducing uncertainty about the, the signing. So they need to know not only what they have done in the past, as I said, but what they will do in the, in the new context. So this contextualization only can be brought by a very deep uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning models. Uh, and this is the only thing that answers the, the questions clubs are doing to to themselves related to, to a player. If they want to, for example, if they want to compare two players and these two players has performed in, in different contexts, for example, imagine Real Madrid Castilla uh, thinking about promoting one full fullback uh, instead of uh, signing a fullback from uh, first division in, in Germany, Bundesliga. Uh, so they, they cannot compare these two, two performance because they have performed this in two different contexts. So they need to transport the performance into a new context through artificial intelligence in order to know what will be this performance in the future in Real Madrid next year if they, they play for a Fidan team with a different context, different league. And, and this contextualization allows the club to compare in an honest way. So for this is a, only one example of uh, uh, how we need to identify what is what clubs are really asking to themselves. And this is um, contextualization is, is only an example, but of course can be only, only be uh, driven by artificial intelligence models. No, that's, that's great. So we think about again looking looking to our sort of third section of discussion around digital transformation within football and we've developed this simple kind of maturity framework where you know, we look at football clubs and think of what stage of, of that journey are they on and just to try and help them understand where they are and, and help them to sort of navigate the, the digital transformation journey so Pedro if I, if I come to you first on this one interested in your viewpoint on what you're seeing from the, you know, the different clubs uh, and entities you're working with um on where they are in terms of their maturity and then maybe just talk us through how how you're you know helping them move from let's say stage one to stage two of that journey um and, and yeah, the way you're trying to help them understand the benefits of, of that digital transformation uh, process yeah it, uh, as you mentioned uh, for our you know we have now a, a big client base and partner base and you know, all that covers around you know 15 countries in the more than 60 sports so we'll be able now to identify which level of maturity they are on this journey you know let's say of transformation no? and of course our solution helps the whole process you no know, because we cover from the pre-sales to uh, itself the sales itself you know the, the final point of that and identifying the, the, the property you no know, whatever it's a, a football club or any federation asking themselves and identify where am I here can fit a little bit better for this answer. No? So basically our solution can help not only track, so first identify which kind of content, which kind of, uh, um, of, of content you're generating to each, to each audience. The second is they need to answer, to, to ask themselves you know, a little bit where I wanna go, as I think Esteban was saying now in the next year or two in terms of monetization, is this is part of my strategy? 
as leadership is you know supporting me on on this process or i'm just including digital as a giveaway including the whole other packs you know on the other assets i think this level of maturity when you fit is where solutions and including uh, horizon but not only us can be uh, included onto this journey you know for each of this uh, those properties you know but all rely basically on them again asking the question where we want to go in the next year i we want to stick with traditional business and keep losing opportunity this gap or are we want to move on following the industry and the, not only the the trends but basically the ones who are sponsoring us the, the brands who are investing in us going to this direction you know? so what we are finding out is that uh, there's a big mix of maturity level you know, for each of the properties but one thing it's clear you no know, uh, it seems at least in the last six months everyone understand that the digital component it's, it comes here not only to build the audience, not only to generate fun content and engagement, but also to be monetized in a proper way. Yeah, that's great. And Esteban, from, from your side, from the, the on-field perspective, what are you seeing in terms of some of your clients in their level of maturity and, and in how they're trying to use this more sort of AI-driven approaches to player performance? Are you seeing uh, and the big disparity between those you know, the early phase of that journey and, and the latter stages and, and how are you trying to help clubs think think differently around that, that, that journey that they could go on? Yes, what we have seen is that with the exception of uh, exception of, of some clubs uh, uh, like Real Madrid that they have their own inner uh, team that is probably Best, best digital transformation team in in the world. We have seen that, that more than ninety percent of the of the clubs are, are in institution in football needs a global help in order to drive uh, technology into their structures. So it's not not only giving them the formation uh, about the technology, but helping them to create their own team and also uh, giving them help not not only the the solutions but also how how they can improve their performance in 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 every solution so this consultancy is all, uh, is also some things that we need to apply into most of the of our clients um, what what i think we have to say and this is something uh, i'm well aware that Horizon agree is that we need to democratize it's our responsibility to democratize this kind of technology so I'm well aware that uh, Pedro uh, and Horizon can work with Real Madrid, but also can work with Marbella in Segunda B, that is uh, the club where I'm playing right now. And this is the, the spirit of, of companies that wants to, to go into the, into the next level and be leaders in the future, to have the uh, ability to give the best solution, but to give this kind of solution to the, to the whole industry. And this is something we also do in all of it. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Michael, going to come to you now, if I may. And uh, obviously, the, the size of the club uh, will dictate how, yeah, how much digital transformation can influence uh, some of the opportunities that are out there. And, and obviously, it impacts the requirements you need to, to execute this as well. So. I was keen to understand from your perspective on some of the, the internal synergies you've been able to create uh, using using digital and innovation and how that sort of helped you, you know, build out new concepts and, and you know, business models, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> obviously the the size of the club does have a does have an impact on the on the approach that you take. And, and uh, I mean, just to, to to kind of echo on uh, what Esteban and, and uh, Pedro said, I mean, you know, the, the great thing about, you know, digital transformation today is that uh, you, it doesn't really matter how big uh, a club you are, how big an organization you are. I mean, whether you're, you have the capabilities of building a data science team and data engineering team inside your organization, or you can go to the market and you can find great partners like Olisip and like Horizon, where you can get access to this technology in a way that any any organization can uh, can make use of it. So I mean, 
it's it is it is like going all the way back to the start of the conversation i mean it is a mindset it's about wanting to make that change and i mean for for us you know our, our digital transformation journey didn't start when i joined the club and it's not going to finish under my watch i mean it's a it's you know the term digital maturity has been used and, and that's a term that we use as well and the the great thing about it and the interesting thing about it is that that's a term that constantly evolves there is no sort of end uh, in line, there is no finish line. It's it's something that you're constantly moving the goalposts, and there's constantly things that you can do to continue to improve. Um, you know, I think some of the some of the bigger picture things that we kind of look at is, you know, while it can it can sometimes be easier to uh, get lost a little bit in the multitude of solutions that are out in the market. One of the things that is uh, I find is always important to do is sort of look at that big picture and really understand where are those synergies between the different parts of your business? So um, uh, in the sense of, you know, in the way that the horizon has been talking about, I mean, it might seem like a, a perfectly natural part right now to think of digital media as part of a partnerships negotiation. But once upon a time, those were two separate pieces of the business. And so looking at that synergy between the, the digital networks that, that have been developed and the ability to then monetize those and, and, and understand the value of the inventory is, one example of where synergies between different parts of the business are are helping companies to to create a value that's not just the sum of the individual parts but it's really greater than the sum of the individual parts and those patterns carry across whether it's looking at the merchandising e-commerce uh you know ticketing businesses looking at the synergies between those that's uh that synergy is usually powered by this digital transformation and this sort of digital glue that sits underneath all of this. Um, and so that's that's one thing that I think is is sort of applicable to to companies, whether they're big or small um, in that respect. Great, so I'm definitely sure we're out of time now. So sadly that comes to the end of our session, but I think uh, everyone listening and watching will agree. It's been a, been a fascinating discussion. It's a huge topic. It's uh, entirely, you know, critical to the future of the industry. But uh, from my perspective, you know, thank you to the panelists for sharing those fascinating insights uh, and uh, a topic we can continue to talk about for many hours, but, but our time is up today. So but thank you from my side and I'll pass back to David to yourself uh, from here. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Kyle. Absolutely captivating stuff. Yeah, great to hear uh, from, uh, well, the Real Madrid side of things, of course, talking about some, some big, big concepts there what was 5g going to do uh, ai is a catch-all term but well just to take one quote from uh what particularly mike was saying there it's here it's real it's not a buzzword and it will have a big impact in business every day and we're going to continue to try to be impactful here and look at how football leagues have been managing things in covid times we've got a, a pan continental perspective here because we're talking about lots of different european leagues and in fact european leagues themselves will be represented in this next panel and it's coming up in just five minutes time here on day four of wfs live